The Pierce Arrow Motor Car Company was an American motor vehicle manufacturer based in Buffalo, New York, which was active from 1901 to 1938. Although best known for its expensive luxury cars, Pierce Arrow also manufactured commercial trucks, fire trucks, camp trailers, motorcycles, and bicycles. <laughs> Early history The forerunner of Pierce Arrow was established in 1865 as Heinz, Pierce and Munchauer. The company was best known for its household items, especially its delicate, gilded birdcages. In 1872, George Norman Pierce bought out the other two principals of the company, changed the name to the George N. Pierce Company, and in 1896 added bicycles to the product line. The company failed in its attempt to build a steam-powered car in 1900 under license from Overman, but by 1901 had built its first single-cylinder, two-speed, no reverse motorette. In 1903, it produced a two-cylinder car, the Arrow. In 1904, Pierce decided to concentrate on making a larger, more luxurious car for the upscale market, the Great Arrow. This became the company's most successful product. The solidly built, four-cylinder car won the Glidden Tour in 1905, an endurance run to determine and celebrate the most reliable car. Thirty-three cars entered the 350-mile race from New York City to Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. The race was won by Percy Pierce in a Great Arrow. The noted industrial architect Albert Kahn designed the Pierce Arrow factory complex at Elmwood Avenue and Great Arrow Avenue in about 1906. It was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1974. George Pierce sold all rights in the company in 1907, and he died three years later. In 1908, Pierce Motor Company was renamed as the Pierce Arrow Motor Car Company. In 1909, U.S. President William Howard Taft ordered two Pierce Arrows and two white Model M Tourers to be used for state occasions, the first official cars of the White House. The Pierce Arrows engine displacement started at a massive 11.7L and was increased later to 13.5L, at the time making it by far the largest engine offered in any production automobile in the world. In 1910, Pierce dropped its other four-cylinder models and focused exclusively on six-cylinder cars. The model 6-36, 6-48, and 6-66 continued for the next decade. Starting in 1918, Pierce Arrow adopted a four-valve per cylinder T-head inline six engine dual valve six, one of the few, if only, multi-valve flathead design engines ever made. In 1910, George Pierce died. In 1912, Herbert M. Dawley later a Broadway actor-director joined Pierce Arrow, and he designed almost every model until 1938. Until 1914, Pierce Arrow also made a line of motorcycles, including the Pierce 4. In 1914, Pierce Arrow adopted its most enduring styling hallmark when its headlights were moved from a traditional placement at the radiator's sides, into flared housings molded into the front fenders of the car. This gave the car an immediately visible distinction in front or side views. At night, the car appeared to have a wider stance. Pierce patented this placement, which endured until the final model of 1938. Although Pierce always offered customers the option of conventional headlamps, only a minority ordered this option. The Pierce Arrow was a status symbol, owned by many Hollywood stars and tycoons. Most of the royalty of the world had at least one Pierce Arrow in its collection. Some have described Pierce and two of its rivals among American luxury cars, Peerless and Packard, as the three P's of motordom. Industrial efficiency expert Frank Gilbreth extolled the virtues of Pierce Arrow, in both quality and in its ability to safely transport his large family. Its wheelbase was 12 feet 3 in 3 meters. The transmission was a four-speed manual in 1919. Actor Seshu Hayakawa Bridge on the River Kwai famously drove a custom-ordered gold-plated Pierce Arrow. A restored 1919 Pierce Arrow is on display at the Woodrow Wilson Presidential Library. An open-bodied Pierce Arrow carried Woodrow Wilson and Warren G. Harding to Harding's 1921 inauguration. Pierce Arrow advertisements were artistic and understated. Unusual for car advertising, the image of the car was in the background rather than the foreground of the picture. Usually, only part of the car was visible. 
The Pierce Arrow was typically depicted in elegant and fashionable settings. Some advertisements featured the car in places a car would not normally go, such as the West and other rural settings, a testament to the car's ruggedness and quality. Several second-hand Pierce Arrow cars were bought by fire departments, stripped down to the chassis and engine, the wheelbase lengthened, and built back into fire engines. Some of these fire engines were in service for up to 20 years. Topic 1928–1933 In 1928, the Studebaker Corporation of South Bend, Indiana, gained control of the Buffalo firm. The association was to last for five years, with moderate benefits to both companies' engineering departments, which continued to function as separate entities. Pierce Arrow also gained a dealer network, as the cars were sold through Studebaker dealerships. Under Studebaker's ownership, Pierce Arrow retired the venerable six-cylinder engine and in 1929 introduced an L-head straight-eight engine, which displaced 366 cubic inches. 1933 Silver Arrow and the end of the line In 1933, Pierce Arrow unveiled the radically streamlined Silver Arrow in a final attempt to appeal to the wealthy at the New York Auto Show. The car was well received by the public and the motoring press, being announced with the slogan, Suddenly it's 1940. Pierce sold five examples but, since it was priced at $10,000 during the worst of the Depression, the rich were hesitant to spend so much. The bodies were built at Studebaker, which subsequently assisted in rolling out a lower-priced production model. This, however, lacked many luxury features of the show car and still failed to generate enough sales. Starting in 1936, Pierce Arrow produced a line of camper trailers, the Pierce Arrow Travelodge. They also produced a new V12 sedan that was redesigned and considered the safest and most luxurious sedan of its day. The Rio Grande Southern Railroad converted five Pierce Arrow automobiles and a couple of Buicks into motorized railcars, effectively buses and trucks on rail wheels. The nickname Galloping Goose was soon applied to these vehicles, reportedly based on their waddling motion and honking horn. Most of these conversions still survive. Pierce was the only luxury brand that did not field a lower-priced car e.g., the Packard 120 to provide cash flow, and without sales or funds for development, the company declared insolvency in 1938 and closed its doors. The final Pierce Arrow assembled was built by Carl Wise, the firm's chief engineer, from parts secured from the company's receivers. Pierce's remaining assets, which probably would include the 40 arrows made in October 1938, were sold at auction on a Friday, May 13, 1938. The factory equipment used to make Pierce Arrow V12 engines was bought by Seagrave Fire Apparatus, which used it to make engines for fire engines. Topic: <laughs> Recent use of the name In 2006, a group of classic car enthusiasts from Switzerland applied the name to a 10L, 24-cylinder car designed by Luigi Colani. According to their website, the company intended to revive the Pierce Arrow car in the form of a Pierce Silver Arrow II. As of January 12, 2015, the brand is registered to Spintech Filtration, with the classification for automobiles, apparatus for locomotion by land, air, or water including motors, engines, couplings, and transmission components. Advertisements <inaudible> 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 Gallery Topic <laughs> See also List of automobile manufacturers List of defunct automobile manufacturers <laughs>